A 13-year-old boy fends off a burglary suspect shooting the intruder as he tried to break into his home. The protector of the home, the hero in this case, is a 13-year-old. His name is Luis, and he's in eighth grade. He was home late Friday night with his mother and four sisters when a man tried to break into their house, breaking a window, trying to force his way inside the home. Now, Luis and his mother both confronted this intruder. It was the mother that was armed and she was also trying to dial 911 and call police and when Luis saw his mother kind of struggling with the firearm he is the one that took it from her hand and pulled the trigger shooting that intruder in the abdomen and on in the arm. Phoenix police say they found 35-year-old Juan Saavedra with several gunshot wounds to his abdomen and right arm. Police say he admitted to breaking into the house and that he was high on methamphetamine at the time. He also told police he was trying to find the friend he had been doing drugs with earlier when he broke into the house. Saavedra was banging on a door, then shattered a window despite being warned to leave the property. Juan Saavedra, September 11, 1987. Saavedra was treated and released from the hospital for his gunshot wounds. At his first court appearance, his only concern appeared to be getting out of jail. I'm not going to be released. If you post your bond, you'll be released. Good luck, sir. You know what the craziest thing is? The anti-gun lobby will probably use this case as one of those child gun violence incidents whenever they use those stats to try to scare everybody and make people think that a bunch of infants and children are just getting shot to death every other day when that's not the case. You see... And what's also interesting about it is not too long ago, Gavin Newsom in California was crying and clutching his pearls about how gun manufacturers are marketing guns to children and basically tried to come up with a law that pretty much prevented any gun manufacturer from being able to market any firearm in California. But here we are with a 13 year old who was able to do with an, what an adult can't do. Now, that's not an indictment on this kid's mother. Not at all. There are some people who have a hard time taking a life regardless of the circumstance. And then there are other people who will rise to the occasion. That's not always the case and you shouldn't depend on it. But here you have a 13 year old who was able to protect his family with a firearm. That's right. A kid was able or a teenager was able to protect his family with a firearm. Let the anti-gun lobby tell it the only thing a firearm can be used for is evil. All firearms are bad, especially in the hands of a kid. But yet this kid just saved his entire family. There will be no congratulations to this kid. The anti-gun lobby isn't going to prop him up and say, you know what? We feel this way about firearms, but this kid did the right thing. It'll be hush. They won't say a word. But that also speaks to how firearms are the great equalizer. Here you have some lunatic hopped up on crystal meth. And he was able to be put down or at least stopped by a third year old and it's also a perfect example of how a firearm is neither good it's neither bad it just is it's a tool that tool gave that 13 year old the power to protect and save his family let's say this kid didn't know anything about firearms let's say the firearm wasn't in the house to begin with they would be behind the curve so take this video and show people so that they have the examples because the media is not going to show this video. It'll get it on some local news and it'll be gone in a day or two and nobody will ever hear about it. But now we are in a position with social media to broadcast these types of videos to millions of people so that they can see how firearms are used for good. And one other aspect too that I'm pretty sure people caught on, this guy's probably going to get out on bail. That means he'll probably get high and do the same thing over and over again. So I want you to think about that. It's a rotating system. He was already out on probation. And now he's gotten shot in an attempt to burglarize a home. And now he's in jail, but probably going to get out of jail to get out on the streets and do it all over again. That's the kind of system that you have in this country right now. So you tell me, can you really truly depend on the government to keep you safe when the very people who are trying to harm you are just being let right back out into the streets like it's nothing? And say what you want. I'll be the first to admit there is a component to it that is inherently just the system. The justice system is inherently designed to avoid having innocent people thrown in jail without any due process. So that much part, that part I get. But understand the realities of that means that 
there are some very, very, very bad people who are going to be continuously let back out onto the streets as a result of it. So that to me is the greatest incentive not to put your hands in the trust of the government and to figure out a way to defend yourself effectively with a firearm because of the way the system is set up and that's just inherent it airs on the side of protecting the innocent while you know what just accepting the fact that there are going to be some guilty who will be let back out onto the streets so you need to do what you need to do to protect yourself no one's going to do it for you there's no system in place that is foolproof that's going to be designed there to be there exactly when you need it. It can't happen. It won't happen. The only person who's going to be there immediately when you need it is you. And what you immediately need at your disposal at that time is a firearm. You know how frightening it is to think about what happens in the moments before, during, and even days after having to use your gun in self-defense? When you first start carrying a gun for protection, it can be a very scary and nerve wracking experience, especially if you haven't gotten the education and training you need to feel confident. I've been there myself, hoping I never have to go through a self-defense shooting, which is why I'm a member of the USCCA. As a USCCA member, you can eliminate some of the stress of carrying a gun for protection by accessing the amazing wealth of firearm education, training, and current state-specific gun laws of your state or states you may travel to. This can help you be prepared for or hopefully even avoid a self-defense incident. As a bonus, members automatically become insured on the self-defense liability insurance policy purchased by an issue to the USCCA. Click below to learn more. I'm sure the YouTube algorithm is gonna do a phenomenal job of suppressing this message. So please share this video with as many people as you can so we can beat the algorithm and get our two-way message out to the masses. Also, don't forget to like this video and leave a comment and hit the bell and subscribe button.